Soon, Don was running past old wooden houses and fields full of fruits and vegetables, and before long he found himself at the edge of town, near the wheat fields to the north and the corn to the east. The air smelled pretty good, even considering that it was almost midday, but there was a scent to it that Don didn't recognize, a less pleasant scent which Don had never smelled before, coming from the fields of wheat and corn. Of course, for an invader, the cornfields would have been the perfect spot to attack from since the corn provided much better concealment for invading forces than an open field did. However, Don could see the corn swaying as the enemy forces moved through it, drawing closer to Troma. There were definitely invaders there, and the knights hadn't arrived yet. Quickly, Don concealed himself behind one of the nearby farmhouses and peered out at the swaying corn, which heralded the attack of the enemy. It was frustrating, because although he'd never been quite that close to the enemy before, what he really wanted was to be able to face them and fight them head-on, just like his mother had before she'd passed away. The problem was that Don's mother had been a very talented fighter, and Don had very little fighting experience. He knew that he wasn't ready to fight the enemy yet, and it really made him angry. In fact, that inability to fight had made Don so angry in the past that it had driven him to practice in his spare time to try to train himself in what he thought the knights needed to learn. Don's desire to be a knight was more than just a dream. It was close to being an obsession. Don's mother's serenity had been a town guard with plenty of skill in combat. When Don was only four years old, however, serenity had been killed in an invasion. A group of orcs had tried to invade Troma, and Serenity had fought them, dying in battle. From the moment that Don had learned what had happened to his mother, he'd had a lot of anger in his heart, and from that point on, he knew that he had to fight the same enemy and protect the people he cared about no matter what it took. However, anger wasn't all that Don had in his heart. His dream of knighthood wasn't solely a search for revenge. To him, it seemed wrong that he should be helpless to protect the people in his life. Don didn't have a huge number of friends, but he cared about the ones he had, which was why he hadn't wanted them to follow him to the site of the impending battle. He didn't want them getting hurt, but he knew he couldn't really protect them by force. He was still just a kid with no formal training. Of course, kids like Don couldn't protect the people they loved. Most of the adults that Don knew, in fact, couldn't protect their loved ones either. In fact, even the town guards had a difficult time protecting the people under their care. The only ones in the kingdom who could really be depended on to be able to protect others were the royal knights of Gellum. They were the best of the best, the warriors who inspired Don, the ones he most wanted to be like, and they were the reason why he was willing to risk his neck just to catch a glimpse of the fight that would soon take place to the northeast of town. As Don watched the cornfields carefully, however, a creature emerged from the corn that he hadn't noticed a mere five seconds before, and it was horrible to see. It was all the evidence that Don needed to convince him that Troma was under attack by the enemy. The creature that stood just outside of Troma definitely bore a lot of resemblance to a human, but it was twisted in shape and wounded in several places. Its muscles seemed to shift unnaturally as it moved, and many of them were visible in the open air. It gave off a nasty stench of rotting flesh, and there were signs all over the creature of death and decay. If not for the fact that it continued to move towards town, Don might have sworn that it was a hundred-year-old corpse. The beast definitely fit all the descriptions that Don had ever heard of a ghoul. He swallowed hard at the sight and tried to suppress his fear and revulsion over the hideous creature, terrified of drawing its attention. It was, after all, undead, the dead brought to life by sorcery, and that made it not only dangerous, but an agent of evil as well. If it got even a glimpse of Don, it was very likely that it would try to kill him. However, just as Don was trying to inch away from the terrible monster, he caught sight of the glint of metal on the horizon, which meant that the knights would arrive in moments. He was so pleased by the sight that he started to relax a little, and was shocked a moment later when the town lookout gave three blasts on his horn. Don knew what those blasts meant. The number of blasts was meant to inform the knights of how great the emergency was. The length of the blasts was intended to tell them which direction to ride when approaching the town in order to reach the source of the emergency. Don had studied the horn blasts in the past because he knew that he'd need to have them memorized if he ever became a knight himself. Three horn blasts indicated a class three emergency, which meant that the people of the town were in danger of being killed by enemy forces, and the knights should make their move at once. There were five classes of emergency, each of which required a different response from the knights. However, although Don knew what the sound of the horn meant, it was still surprising to hear it so suddenly, and it gave him a start, causing him to knock his head against the wood of the house in front of him. At that moment, the ghoul turned its own head with an unearthly jerk, and its empty, inhuman eyes were fixed on Don at once. Blast! Don muttered as he tried to run, but the ghoul had leapt into the air with unnatural strength and was diving towards him with a snarl. Quickly, Don dove backwards, dodging the creature's first swipe, but it was more by luck than anything else. The monster landed on the ground and sprang back towards him again in one motion, faster than Don would ever have imagined it could. 
Don was terrified as he watched the creature's bony hands getting closer to his chest in a clawing motion, but he knew that he couldn't dodge it again. In despair, he closed his eyes tightly, feeling angry over having put himself in that much danger.